And tonight, in the inaugural edition of The Real Obama, we begin the work that the mainstream media has refused to do for years, and that is vet President Obama. And as we count down to Election Day, this is the segment where we will uncover the truth about the current occupant of the Oval Office. And tonight we begin, where else, but with his first broken promise. Here it is. This first executive order that we are signing uh, by the authority vested in me as president, the con uh, president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America in order to affect the appropriate disposition of individuals currently detained by the Department of Defense at Guantanamo uh, and promptly to close the detention facility at Guantanamo consistent with the national security and foreign policy interests of the United States and the interests of justice, I hereby order. And we then provide uh, the process whereby Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. Now, the president looked into the cameras and made that pledge more than three years ago. But still to this day, Guantanamo remains open for business. However, with the general election approaching, it appears the administration has some new ideas on how to clear out Gitmo. Now, according to Foreign Policy magazine, a prisoner swap involving the Taliban and the United States has nearly been finalized. Now, the deal would reportedly send five Taliban leaders out of Gitmo in exchange for one, quote, Western prisoner. Now, that information was revealed to the magazine magazine by none other than the Senate Intel chair, that's Dianne Feinstein, who strongly opposes a swap. And she said, quote, we are giving up people who killed a lot of people, people who are the head of major efforts of the Taliban, adding, quote, that these are major Taliban figures. They are not minor people. Joining me now with more as we vet the administration's irresponsible handling of Gitmo is Fox News contributor Liz Cheney. Liz, welcome back to the program. Hey, Sean, thank you for having right, me. Let, let, let's start at the beginning here. That was a promise the, that the then-candidate Obama made, then-President Obama made, that has not been fulfilled. Now, this is only step one. We have right. more than enough material to get to Election Day. But when you put this together with this new breaking story, doesn't that suggest that the administration has been negotiating with terrorists, which raises a lot of questions that I think the American people need to know about? Right. I mean, I would say, first of all, it's important for people to remember that the reason why he has not closed uh, Guantanamo is, is mostly because the American people stood up and said, we do not want you, Mr. President, to bring terrorists onto U.S. soil. We need to be able to hold, hold those terrorists someplace safe and secure, which Guantanamo is. Having said that, though, there now seems, with this latest news in particular, to be no terrorist Barack Obama is unwilling to release. And these commanders, there are five of the top Taliban commanders at Guantanamo, uh, the Joint Task Force Guantanamo, which is the entity there that is responsible for the intelligence, for the detainees, who knows the most about these detainees, has classified them as posing a high risk to the United States and to our allies. They've said they've got longstanding ties to al-Qaeda. And this same task force has said they should not be released. They should remain in U.S. custody. Now, so the White House has a lot of explaining to do on this one. A lot of explaining. But there's a couple of issues here is, number one, that they have apparently been negotiating with the Taliban. Now, if you remember, when President Reagan was in office, we had this this issue that was called Iran-Contra, arms for right. hostages. And there was a lot of outrage that was expressed by the left. Um, is it look, I want any American and I am told through my sources that they're talking about an American soldier here. I want them released. But do we release people that are hell bent on the destruction of America uh, and connected to Al Qaeda and high ranking members of the Taliban? Do we even sit and talk with them, number one, and then offer such a deal like this? Well, there are two different stories we've heard, both of which are very troubling. One is the one that you mentioned, that they're considering releasing these Taliban commanders in exchange for an American prisoner who's being held. We absolutely should not do that. Obviously, we want all Americans released. But you know, Sean, if we release, we begin the process of releasing Taliban commanders, Taliban prisoners, Taliban terrorists, in exchange for people who have been kidnapped by the Taliban, all it does is encourage them to kidnap and hold more Americans. 
Right. The second story we've heard is that this is part of the beginning of a negotiation with the Taliban um, that's part of getting out of Afghanistan. Now, the uh, administration initially said there'd be conditions for this negotiation. Initially, they said the Taliban had to lay down their arms, had to accept the oh, Afghan come on. constitution. Yeah, you, you're going to exactly. believe that. Come on. Well, and the Taliban has now come out and said, no, thanks. Yeah. Secretary Clinton subsequently said, well, we didn't really mean those were preconditions. We mean those are objectives. So, you know, so, wh however you package this, it, it is uh, dangerous to the national security of the United States. So, so we're, we're talking about negotiating with terrorists on the one hand. Now, on the other hand, we have another issue involving Egypt and the president bragging about democracy and the Arab Spring. Well, now we know who was elected. People that uh, I predicted would get in power, and that was the Muslim Brotherhood. They were saying at the time, prepare for war with Israel. Now the Egyptian parliament declared that Israel is their number one enemy, which couldn't come at a worse time. Uh, considering that the Iranians are seem hell bent on getting nuclear weapons, Israel is more isolated from their their number one ally, the United States. And by the way, a majority of Americans polled support a strike on Iran if necessary to stop this. And can you imagine a worse message, Sean, for us to be sending than you know to have uh, our enemies and our allies in Cairo and elsewhere watching as we do everything we can, frankly, to bribe the Taliban here? I think the United States has made itself under Barack Obama irrelevant at best across the Middle East, at especially and precisely the moment when you know we need to be ensuring that we're maintaining and securing our interests and the security of our allies. And uh, you know, as you watch the earthquake that's happened across that part of the world and you line that up against an America that's in retreat and that's the only way you can describe it, uh, you've really got to start wondering about you know, what that will do long term and even short term to America's interests. We cannot yeah. secure our interests if we're in retreat around the world. I can't believe how wrong the president was on the Arab Spring, which is now the Arab winter, and now the Egyptian parliament declares Israel as their number one enemy. Very, very precarious. Uh, Liz, yeah. thank you for being with us. We will continue every night right here on this program, including more coming up tonight to vet the president and do the mainstream media's job. Also coming up next, Carl Rove will join us.